This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. I'm 2KMMR and I have at least 5 kills by 8 minutes every game speed. I'm the exception. I'm definitely the exception. Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be looking at Kasane's Lycan. If you don't know who this is, because he's pretty new to the pro scene, at least relatively new, it is the offlaner for TSM, the North American team. TSM is one of the best North American teams in the world and Kasane is a absolute expert of the unit heroes. He's a rank 38 player, extremely strong player, and really what's notable is, as I said, he's a unit hero specialist. He's a brood guy, he's a lycan guy, he's a beastmaster guy, and he makes these heroes look absolutely broken. So today we're going to be breaking down how Kasane makes lycan look broken, and I'm pretty sure this is his favorite hero. It seems like almost every chance they get, they pick the lycan for Kasane, and try to dumpster whatever game they're in. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank. And I'll see you there. So something notable to me about Kasane's gameplay on Lycan is he actually switches up his skill build from lane to lane. Some lanes you'll actually see him take Howl, and some lanes you'll see him take Feral Impulse. Now this lane, he takes Feral Impulse, and the reason why, at least the reason I think why he takes Feral Impulse over Howl, is because I believe Howl against Morphling, while it is good against Morphling's base damage, you don't have a lot of kill threat on the Morphling. Morphling can waveform away when he is Howled, and therefore it's going to get generally wasted. On top of that, you just don't have that much kill potential in general in this lane, as Dual Breath and Liquid Fire is pretty good about dealing with the wolves and the damage of TSM's lane here. So I think the Feral Impulse against Morphling and just playing to outlast him with the extra little bit of damage and an extra little bit of regen makes a lot of sense. From there, the main thing he does well is he just last hits with Wolves. I know it sounds pretty simple, but a lot of players just are kind of bad at it. You'll see a big portion of Lycan's landing stage tends to be pulling a lot of creep back row and then focusing heavily on CS. We even saw him contest the range creep there, which is something I kind of thought he wouldn't do very much, but yeah, he'll actually be willing to contest creeps. I think the reason he's contesting a lot of creeps in this lane is because Morphling just doesn't do a lot in the early levels. He knows for a fact that, honestly, I was shocked that Execration picked Morphling and a Lycan. I actually think Lycan is a hard counter to Morphling because Howl is very, very good against Morphling after he uses Manta in the mid game, and Morphling doesn't pressure Lycan in the laning stage at all. So I have no idea why they picked Morphling in the Lycan. I, I actually think this is like, maybe it was good against the rest of the heroes. I think that's what it was. It's like good against Undying. It's pretty good against Rubik. They picked it into the Terrorblade as well. So I guess it's for that. They kind of just thought it was good enough against the rest of the heroes, but it's certainly bad against Lycan. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Oh, he actually skilled second point Feral Impulse. Huh. Okay, so from my understanding, I actually thought in lanes that are easy, and I would consider this a lane that's reasonably easy, that you might take Summon Wolves level 2. And the reason why you might do that is because in the easy lanes, the Summon Wolves skilling, when you skill it, it's more damage than the second point of Feral Impulse. I'm a little bit surprised to see him do this in a lane that seems reasonably easy to me, but maybe he just feels like he doesn't want to get pressured at all. I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. This is... Uh... Not something I would have expected. Now at this point in the lane, Kasani and Ari can get pretty aggressive. They have a... <laughs> this is actually crazy. When Ari is in range of Kasane with his headdress, as the Rubik bought a headdress, which is pretty cool against Jakiro and Morphling, because they do a lot of chip damage, but they'll never kill you from full. And, uh, and headdress is good in lanes like that, so it's a really cool adaptation to the lane. Uh, that Arya has made here. Maybe he's also planning on buying mech. Not really sure about that, but uh, very, very cool. But when he has a Tango active, he has 20 HP regen. And so with 20 HP regen and 9 armor, you're pretty free to just hit whoever's in range. And so uh, I definitely expect him, and I recommend if you decide to pick up the Lycan in your games, to get very aggressive on this level 3, level 4 timing. Level 4 tends to be the very strong Lycan timing as your wolves begin to hit very hard. Uh, as his courier does die here, but you can see just ripping into the Morphling. After he bullies the Morphling away, he's going to try to pick up, you know, a nice little melee creep deny, and he will get it. Now, my favorite play of the game so far is at 8 minutes here. The game is 0-0, zero to zero, which is pretty damn funny. I guess it kind of makes sense based on the lane matchups, but uh, yeah, 0-0, zero to zero, and when you hit Shapeshift on Lycan, you just want to go crazy. You want to take a lot of risk. And this is something I've learned from Kasane. You want to use Shapeshift almost as fast as you can. Now, 
I can't guarantee that this is the way he thinks because at the end of the day I don't know exactly what he thinks, but I've watched a couple of his Lycan replays and he tends to use shapeshift even if the kill doesn't seem very guaranteed. And I think his thought process is, even if I don't kill them, let's say they both TP out, you know, I think he knows that the Jakira TP'd in, even if he can't kill them, they're likely going to have to TP. And that's going to result in, in him most likely taking the tower. So it's kind of a win no matter what. Obviously there's some lanes where maybe shapeshift doesn't accomplish either, you know, the TP or the kill, but ends up getting first blood onto the Jakiro and is going to result in heavy tower pressure, probably full taking the tower. I can't imagine Morphling can get back here in time as Lycan shreds towers. Like even after the nerf from last patch, I still think he'll take it out here and he will. And oh, the Jakiro getting ripped into. Probably dead, but that's totally fine. From there, Kasane plays the game pretty slow. He did move towards mid around the 11 minute mark. Okay, he's actually getting hunted. Wow, what a play from Execration. Also good, I honestly, I really like the fact that he saved his uh, Shapeshift there. Shapeshift is a great tool to disengage and it's often a very good idea to use it to try to run away. As the cooldown, it's pretty okay because it's 125 seconds, but the duration is 25 seconds. So the cooldown is only truly about 100 seconds, which is not bad at all. One thing I'd like to mention as well is he takes a value point in Howl at level eight. And I think this is huge. He does take Howl in some lanes at level two. For, uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier, so that's just something to keep in mind if you have a lot of kill potential but he takes it a level eight. And I think that's key because around this point in the game, it's going to turn night again soon. And then you get global howl. Howl during the nighttime is global. And it's pretty crazy because you don't even need vision of the enemy heroes for it actually to affect them. And therefore, if let's say Morphling is just farming the tri-camp, you can reduce his damage by even level one howl, I think is what, 25%? If you hit level 10 and if you max out the ability and you have the howl attack damage reduction, just when Morphling's casually jungling, let's say a minute 25, when it becomes night again, you just, <laughs> with 50% uptime, can reduce his damage by 50%. And Morphling is all base damage, so it's pretty comical how much it greases his farming. He has the manta to get rid of it. It's, uh, it's quite funny, but okay. He hits his Helm 2 and on the Helm 2 timing, your creep becomes somewhat unkillable. At least they can't arrow it with Murana. Ricky is going to use the smoke screen to try to stall it out as he's going to look to pick up the kill on the Ricky and they will get him. Very, very nice. But it's important to not overforce the mid tower until you feel like it's super free with the Helm 1 or until you have the Helm 2. This game, he didn't see the angle for the Helm 1 push. And so he kept the game pace somewhat slow. Didn't look for any crazy plays. He did, as I said earlier, rotate mid barely once but ended up not clicking shapeshift and just kept farming out bottom until his helm of the two. In terms of item build and skill build, I've seen very little variation from Kasane. He'll max out the Feral Impulse and then the Howl, skipping the level 10 talent. And then from there, he rushes an Assault Kuros. It's kind of funny to me because there's a lot of Lycan players who opt for drums. Uh, there's some who will buy BKB after helm too, but I mean, I'm sure he's done other builds, but from the games I've watched, which is at least three or four, he's gonna assault Krios in almost every single one of them. And I have a theory on why this is good. Number one, it's the best item for farming overall. And the reason why is when you're farming with Assault Kuros, you just like wipe through camps and waves. It's really, really efficient. Where with something like drums, you don't want to pop the active to farm. That feels very clunky. And yeah, it's just clunky uh, <laughs> because there's a cooldown. You want to keep it to fight. And yeah, it's it's just not it's not that good for farming. Something like BKB, same thing. You don't farm fast. And in terms of fight execution, it's not that important that your hero stays alive. You just got to get shapeshift off. And then you typically actually don't run in with the main hero unless it feels super free. And so it really allows you to force towers, add a lot more teamfight contribution, farm faster. It just seems like the most well-rounded item on average. I don't really feel like you need the armor necessarily. Not that it's bad, but you know, you have plenty of armor from Helm, so I don't really feel like it's for that. He even has Ring of Aquila, so completely armor stacking here, currently sitting at a, at a whopping 33 armor. One thing in particular that's different from Kasane to a lot of the Lycan players I've seen is his willingness to fight without shapeshift. Something I've learned from him is that with Sol Kuros, your hero is pretty good even with no boots and no shapeshift. Like it's weird, but with this strong ancient creep and yeah, just with this creep, this is the best creep I'm pretty sure by far. And the reason why is it provides you with a slope. It also gives you attack speed with uh, the active if you use it and a crazy amount of damage. I mean, look at this Jakiro, slams him, right? Drops the slam with the, with the creep and just solos the Jakiro. No shapeshift, just solos him. Casually walks up, slows him, slams him, gets the attack speed buff on the helm creep, and solo kills him. The Morphling uh, waveforms in, commits to kill the creep, puts him pretty far out of position. Unfortunately, they uh, weren't able to get him. He hit a nice Manta there to get out, but still, they keep chasing on. Even with no helm creep here, 
they chase on. Is he going to take over the range creep or one of these creeps? No, he's not. But the wolves chunk, right? And you typically, when, when you're not in shapeshift form, what you're looking to do is hate crime the uh, the supports. You're looking to take them out because with shapeshift, you can threaten cores pretty well. Uh, even with shapeshift, you tend to want to pick on supports. That tends to be the role of Lycan, but especially without, it's very rare you go on a core. You just you just don't do enough damage without the crits and movement speed on average. But yeah, in this fight here, he kind of baits, gets macro pyre, DK stun. Uh, but you're a tanky hero, you know, 1900 HP with the 30 something armor, 35 armor here is uh, extremely tanky and yeah, baits them in and they win a fight. And with the Assault Kuros, you just farm these these towers like they're nothing. You know, you can see here, just so confidently walks up to the tower and takes the tier two. And that's the power of the Lycan. You know, you get left alone for 30 seconds and you lose your tier one and your tier two. He even is opting for a pipe next, which makes a lot of sense against the Ricky, Marana, DK, even Morphling, right? Is a lot of magic and, and Jakiro, it's very heavy magic damage comp. So I can respect the pipe pickup here. Late pipe? It's even good with uh, the wolves, right? Because it does actually, even though the wolves have a lot of magic resist and the ancient creep also, it really does make you tanky. But in this team fight here, he makes a slight mistake in like spending any time hitting the DK. I think he should completely tunnel vision on the supports and the Ricky. I think going on Morphling is okay to force a bit of a shift and it's a ranged hero, so he has no built-in block, but like going on DK has to be a last resort in these team fights. You know what I mean? Like you can do some damage if the guy has no BKB and you can howl, and affect him with AC, but typically it doesn't do that much. And in this last team fight, or one of the last team fights of the game, and one of the last clips of the game, he has his pipe, he has his salt kiros, and at this point, he makes the supports pretty much useless. And that's why Ligon is such a good hero and has a very, very impressive pub win rate. This is one of the highest winner heroes in, in pubs, and that's considering people's micro tends to be very bad. And I really believe the reason why Lycan has such a high win rate is the hero's biggest weakness is his laning stage, but you don't really get punished for bad laning unless you're like 3.5k, 4k MMR, then people start to get aggressive. But, uh, you know, on average, <laughs> I know people are gonna be like, I'm 2k MMR and I have at least five kills by eight minutes every game speed i'm the exception i'm definitely the exception okay but in this fight here forces out the ghost from jakiro one tap of the creeps is nearly half of his health and you just kind of you just run to the back line like this game, they could DK stun him. I don't even know if he knows where DK is, but he just doesn't seem to care. He's just running in and with 34 armor, <laughs> he's just so tanky. 34 armor plus pipe. I mean, this Morphling spends a little bit of time trying to kill him, does like a third of his health, but whatever. Just destroys the Marana there, like completely evaporates the Marana. And yeah, he creates chaos. And when you create chaos in the team fights, it gives your team information. It allows them to pick on the supports. And in this case, I really love the draft of TSM. And the reason why I love it is having a hero like Puck as their last pick really plays well with the Lycan. Because Lycan can get to the back line, give you the vision of the supports, you follow it up with Coil, need a little bit of control to make sure that the walls and the units can really hit people. And once that control comes in, then the units really go to work. And we saw that in that team fight there. One thing to keep in mind as well is if the game is playing high tempo and you're unable to get to the ancient camp, it's okay to take over a large creep. Unfortunately, they can die to things like Arrow, and they get they just get bursted much more easily, so it's certainly not a first resort. But there are actually a lot of very powerful creeps. For instance, the Alpha Wolf is absurdly strong. The amount of damage amp you give your team, it's 30%. Like, the Alpha Wolf is a crazy creep. People honestly should consider just like buying Helm Dom on random heroes just for the Alpha Wolf late game if their team has high base damage heroes. Because 30% it, it, damage is a wild number. You're giving, let's say a hero like Morphling has 350 damage, which he probably does. Okay, he has 270. Not as much as I expected, but still, even with 270, you're giving him 90 bonus damage, right? 90 bonus damage. That's like 5k gold worth of damage. Just something to think about. Pretty wild. But all right, that's going to be all for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this analysis of Kasane's gameplay. I'm a big fan of him as a player. I'm not going to say his hero pool is limited, but the heroes I've seen him play are Brood, Beast, Lycan, and I think he plays quite a bit of Primal Beast. And I, I really respect that about players. And if you guys are trying to gain a lot of MMR in pubs, I actually recommend trying to limit your hero pool to something like this. There's a lot of overlap with the skill set from Brood, Beast to Lycan. You know what I mean? These heroes tend to do very similar things. They farm a lot of creeps. They put map control fast. They put map control by taking towers. They assassinate supports. Obviously, there are key differences between Brood and Beast and Lycan. These heroes are quite different in a lot of ways, but at the same time, they're very similar. And when you get to play a similar game from game to game, it allows you to really master that play style. And so that's just something for you guys to keep in mind when you're inventing your hero pool. And there's other ways to do this as well. For instance, for a period of time, I was not a unit hero player 
at all. I was the furthest thing from it. I didn't play Beast. I didn't play Lycan. I, I could play them because Nature's Prophet is my favorite hero, but Nature's Prophet is like not that much of a unit hero. It's a little different. It plays somewhat similar, but at the same time, kind of different from the others. But I ended up learning a lot of these heroes and it really helped me. But for a while, for the longest time, I was like a Viper, Sand King, Pugna, Necro, like, you know what I mean? Death Prophet, like Primal Beast. I was just more of like a brawler guy you know what I mean I would just try to win my lane and then kill people I hit a lot of crease but kill people and so it's just something to keep in mind but all right thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed I'll see you in the next one and I'm out peace and that's all but remember before you leave come on before you tune out subscribe to the game leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank if you're stuck click the link down below and I'm out peace